Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to lecture series on aerospace propulsion. So in the previous lecture, we were uh, uh, discussing about the starting of a supersonic intake or how we can establish a, a stable shockwave in a supersonic intake step by step process we have seen. Right. So in this lecture, uh, we are going to start about the gas turbine combustion chamber. Okay. So in this lecture, we are going to see a brief introduction about the gas turbine combustion chamber and what are all the uh, desired properties of a designed combustion chamber and then what are all the basic component and the uh, functions of an, a gas turbine a combustion chamber we are going to see in this today's lecture okay so if i say uh, a gas turbine a combustion chamber okay so what is the function of this gas turbine combustion chamber is that it is to add energy to the cycle Okay, energy to the cycle in sense, see we have a component, right? Intake, uh, compressor, combustion chamber, turbine and the nozzle. So the purpose of your combustion chamber, the gas turbine is to produce the some form of work output. Okay, to that work output may be either it may be a thrust in the form of jet flow or uh, shaft power. Okay, so, so to generate the shaft power or thrust, we need to add or we need to say spend certain amount of energy. So where exactly we are uh, adding energy to the cycle is basically in the combustion chamber that is by burning the fuel. Okay. So we are adding energy to our cycle. So basically what I do here in this that we have a high pressure and a high temperature. High temperature in sense say the flow comes out of your compressor will have temperature around uh, 700 to 800 Kelvin. Okay. So uh, so that's why we call it as the high pressure as well as high temperature gas which is fed by your uh, compressor will be entering in your combustion chamber there we will spray the fuel and we do the combustion basically we burn the fuel under the controlled condition okay so by burning this fuel what i do is that i am increasing the internal energy of my flow okay so internal energy of your flow increase means what does that mean the temperature of your flow also will be increased okay so uh, here you could ask like why do we have to uh, increase the temperature of your flow is that uh, the work output we can extract from your either your turbine or through your nozzle is going to be a function of your inlet flow temperature higher the temperature you will have the higher amount of work output you can extract from that particular engine okay but the problem is that we can't increase our temperature to very very high value there is a limitation because you have a material which is having a temperature limitation so because of the temperature limitation your combustion chamber should control what is the temperature it is going to generate at the end of your combustion okay so uh, if i say like uh, uh, in, in the combustion chamber the amount of heat we are generating okay that is going to depends on our how much amount of temperature we are going to increase that is going to be depends on the material limitation of your uh, turbine okay turbine rotor blade as well as stator blade or nozzle gate vents because you see if i uh, take a combustion chamber alone basically it is a stationary component there you can uh, increase your temperature by providing the cooling okay as long as i provide sufficient cooling technique I can increase my temperature to very high value but when the same flow enters the turbine what is going to happen is that there your turbine is already rotating at a very high speed or it has to rotate at very high speed so that it can produce the shaft power so that shaft power will be utilized to rotate your compressor right uh, then only your engine is going to be self-sustained or else what is going to happen you can't continuously run your uh, compressor using an external system okay so to continuously rotate this uh, compressor we need to supply the shaft power that shaft power is extracted by your turbine so uh, your turbine has to rotate at high speed so when a component on something is rotating at high speed you know there is going to be a huge amount of mechanical force will be or mechanical stress will be acting on that particular blade or rotating component so here we have a turbine rotor blade okay which is going to rotate so now if i'm going to send a high temperature flow here what is going to happen uh, in addition to the mechanical stress you will have the thermal stress also that is why it is important to limit the 
temperature of your flow entering inside your turbine okay so how do we control is that by controlling the amount of fuel i'm burning so you know how much amount of mass flow of air is coming from your compressor for the given mass flow rate okay you have to limit the how much amount of fuel you are going to burn so if you are going to burn an excess amount of fuel what is going to happen the temperature rise will be very high that will result in increased turbine inlet temperature which will result in failure of your turbine blades okay so typically the inlet temperature for your uh, turbine blade is that it will be around 850 degrees celsius to 1000 degree celsius okay you can you can go more than 1000 uh, uh, or 1600 degree celsius because you won't have uh, the uh, your turbine blades will start uh, what to say damage wins once you increase the temperature above this limit okay so uh, if i say a combustion chamber so before going to see the what are all the components of your combustion chamber or how does this combustion process is happening and all let us see uh, if i'm going to design a combustion chamber what are all the properties that combustion chamber should possess that's like it is any component you start design you need you will have a certain conditions or uh, certain properties you will expect okay so what are all the same like uh, desired combustion chamber properties or we are going to discuss in this section okay the first and foremost property of an any uh, uh, combustion chamber is that it should be capable of doing the complete combustion so complete combustion in sense if i'm sp uh, spraying a certain amount of fuel all the fuel has to be burned okay that is meaning is that there should not be any presence of monoxides okay you know right uh, carbon dioxide is okay but carbon monoxide is basically it is a, a pollutant or you can say it is a toxic okay so the complete combustion process the basic requirement of an any combustion chamber okay so then only you won't have this pollution environmental pollution problem as well as when you do the complete combustion only mean then only you are saying that you are completely converting all the energy of your fuel into thermal energy okay if you are not completing the combustion process then you are losing certain amount of fuel so it is going to obviously reduce the efficiency of your combustion chamber so that's why this complete combustion uh, combustion is the first and foremost property of an any uh, designed combustion chamber so next one is obviously this is uh, low total pressure loss which we expect from any component in your uh, gas turbine engine uh, whether it is an intake or it is a compressor or turbine nozzle whatever the component it is you need to have a least amount of total pressure loss so here you could ask how does the total pressure loss is happening in sense you have the combustion chamber inside the combustion chamber your flow is moving over Uh, like a fuel injector you will have the uh, flame holders or you are having a liners casings and all when the flow is moving over these surfaces solid surfaces what is going to happen because of the friction there is going to be certain amount of total pressure loss so you have to design your combustion chamber or any designed combustion chamber should possess a least amount of total pressure loss okay next one is the stability of your combustion process stability of your combustion process in sense the combustion process should be stable that is it should be a continuous and stable one irrespective of whatever happening to your inlet flow because your uh, aircraft is operating under different operating conditions irrespective of the operating condition this combustion process should be stable you see if the combustion is going to shut off what is going to happen entire engine is going to fail so it is important to have the stable combustion chamber even suppose for example due to presence of the turbulence or due to some other reason if something is happening that should not affect the combustion process okay that's what we say it's a stability of your combustion uh, process under different range of mass flow rate pressure temperature okay and fuel air ratio and another one is that a proper temperature distribution at the exit with no hot spot what is the meaning of this no hot spot in sense uh, if i say this is the exit of my combustion chamber in this entire plane your flow temperature should be same 
okay so if the uh, temperature is at different location if it is going to have different property when they move over your turbine blades what is going to happen they are going to create the local hot spots these local hot spots will increase the local thermal stress which will uh, create a turbine blade failure okay so it is important to have a uniform temperature distribution at the exit of your turbine so that you won't have any problem when the same flow is passing over your turbine blades okay and next one is which is we expect from any of the aerospace component is that uh, size okay uh, you know your aircraft engine size is smaller and smaller means you can have the less amount of drag because the presence of your engine outside of your aircraft will obviously increase the drag it is going to produce so if you are having a, a compact engine the drag it is going to produce is going to be less okay because if the drag is more means you have to produce more amount of thrust also so if you want to produce more amount of thrust obviously you have to increase the uh, what to say size of your engine so it's kind of a like closed loop problem uh, once one increases another one also will increase so it is important to have a compact engine so how do we get the compact engine is that every component either it is an intake compressor combustion chamber turbine or nozzle they should be compact so your combustion chamber also should be compact and smaller in size so that you can have the overall uh, compact engine okay and another foremost important <coughs> property decide out of a combustion chamber is that freedom from flame out so what is the meaning of this flame out in sense when an aircraft is operating suddenly due to some external factors if the uh, combustion process is completely shut off that's what we call it as the flame out okay so under what condition this flame out will occur or how come the suddenly a running engine will stop is that you see you see for example when you go to an higher altitudes for example 11 kilometer 12 kilometer or 13 kilometer altitude there your temperature is very very low like 12 211 kelvin which is below negative so 211 means almost minus 60 degrees celsius okay so you see because of this low temperature okay and your pressure there also is going to be less the so pressure is less okay which is going to affect the mass flow rate your temperature also going to be less because of this low temperature okay there may be a possibility that your uh, combustion process will be stopped or due to some reason the fuel sent to your combustion chamber is reduced suddenly okay that also will lead to flame out or precipitation you know at higher altitude you will have the uh, clouds present right so because of the uh, weather condition if there is a sudden change in weather condition the amount of moisture content in your air is going to suddenly increase if the uh, moisture content in your air is increasing physically more amount of water um, molecules will enter inside your combustion chamber because of that it may damp the combustion process or due to this very uh, negative temperature what is going to happen formation of hails hails in sense formation of ice the formation of ice also will lead to the flame out so irrespective of whatever is happening you have to design your combustion chambers uh, such that it should be free of flame out okay so once this flame out occurs it's very difficult okay so it's your engine entire engine is switched off so you have to once again relight it relight in sense re-ignition okay so the relightability in sense even at different altitude under different uh, operating condition because of some reason your aircraft engine is uh, flame out that combustion chamber is flame out it should have the capability of re-ignition or relightability okay so this relightability in sense you see whenever we start a gas turbine engine uh, we are uh, like first what we will do is that we will rotate the compressor the compressor will suck in the mass flow rate and it will send the sufficient amount of mass flow rate to your combustion chamber and there we will spray the fuel and do the combustion process right so uh, what you do you need to have in your engine is that to uh, once again relight your uh, engine you should have either external uh, device to rotate your compressor or we can utilize the uh, windmill effect windmill effect in sense you see you can see the windmills where 
uh, when the flow is moving over it, it will start uh, rotate. Similarly, the aircraft is already at certain altitude. Okay, so you, when it is going to climb down, what is going to happen is that when because of the air entry due to the windmill effect, your compressor may start one second rotate. So it's kind of like you can have these two ways either by using the windmill effect, you can uh, one second start your engine or you should have an additional external device to rotate your compressor so that you can have the relatability. Okay. So whenever you design a combustion chamber, okay, so one of the basic uh, desired properties is that this relatability and same like which I already mentioned operation over a wide range of mass flow rate because at the sea level you are uh, pressure, temperature and density, okay, they are more. So as such, for the same speed, the amount of mass flow enters inside your engine is going to be more than amount of mass flow which is going to enter at the higher altitude. Okay, so even if the mass flow rate is going to change due to the change in altitude or change in the speed at which your compressor is rotating or change in the speed of your aircraft, okay, the mass flow rate will change. Even if the mass flow rate is going to change, the combustion process should happen stably or if there is going to be a significant change in uh, pressure as well as temperature also, uh, the combustion process should be stable. That's why the range of your mass flow rate, the range of your pressure, minimum and maximum pressure, minimum temperature and the maximum temperature should be high enough so that you can have the proper or stable combustion irrespective of your operating condition. Okay, so these are all the, some of the basic requirement and designed combustion chamber should satisfy or uh, these are all the properties which we desire when we start uh, designing a combustion chamber. Okay. So next up, before seeing the uh, process, combustion process inside a uh, uh, gas turbine combustion chamber, first we are going to see the uh, basic components and their function in a gas turbine combustion chamber. Okay. So this basically is a schematic of your uh, um, gas turbine engine combustion chamber, one type. We have different types which we are going to see later. We have can type, can annular, uh, annular type and all. So we are going to see later what is this can type, what is this can annular type and annular type. So it's a one kind of a, a can type combustion chamber, a typical combustion chamber. Okay. And we are going to see what all the uh, basic component. Basic components is this component is must or it should present in any of the combustion chamber design. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the first and foremost component is the outer layer of your uh, combustion chamber, basically that is casing. Next one is the inner uh, structure or inner uh, part of your combustion chamber, is, that is the liner. Okay, and then we have the, the diffuser, we have the fuel injector, uh, we have dome and the swirler, we have the snout, we have the igniter, Okay, and we have the holes in your liner. So, what is the function of this each and every component we are going to see? So, first one is the case or casing of your combustion chamber. Basically, this casing is the outermost layer of your this portion. Okay, this is a casing. The outermost layer of your combustion chamber, what we call it as the uh, case or casing. Okay, so uh, basically this casing is to withstand the high pressure rather than high temperature. You may expect that since it is the outer layer, you may that they think that the temperature inside your combustion chamber is very high. So that when we start designing this uh, casing, it should be capable of withstanding high temperature, but that is not the case. Okay, there is a space between your liner and casing okay so there you will have the flow of air which is going to prevent the uh, temperature load or thermal load to your case as such the purpose of your casing is to withstand the high temperature rather basically it is to withstand the mechanical load rather than the thermal load okay that's what like why because when we start design instead of using a high temperature material you should go with the material which can withstand the high mechanical load okay so the liner the casing should be made of a material it can which can withstand the 
high mechanical load okay and that is to withstand the high pressure because we do the combustion here even though uh, what is that the pressure flow from your compressor will have the very high pressure so the combustion should chamber should have the capability of withstanding this high pressure so that is withstood by your outermost layer that is casing okay so that's what i said like casing is like a pressure vessel that must withstand the uh, high pressure because there is a pressure difference right outside the pressure is less it's atmospheric pressure but inside the pressure is very high so it's kind of like uh, from internally you are having the load acting inside your uh, uh, combustion chamber okay outside you are having less pressure so it will try to uh, expand your uh, what to say combustion chamber so obviously you can't have the expansion so you should ma make your combustion chamber uh, casing material so that uh, it can withstand the high pressure okay uh, next one is the diffuser you see what is the diffuser portion is that this portion what we call it as the diffuser okay so what is the function of this diffuser is that which is common for any diffuser diffuser means it is going to decelerate the incoming flow velocity okay whether diffuser that is intake of your engine or here the function of your diffuser is simply it is to decelerate the velocity of your incoming flow because you could ask them why we have to decelerate our incoming flow velocity is that you see this gas turbine combustion chamber is designed for having combustion between Mach number 0.2 to 0.3. The combustion happening inside your uh, the combustion speed or combustion Mach number inside your combustion chamber is the range of Mach number 0.2 to 0.3. Okay, so such that the flow comes out of your uh, uh, compressor will have a very high Mach number, which will be around Mach 0.6 to 0.7 something in that range. That depends. Okay. So, since your Mach number is very high here, I have to decrease this high Mach number to my record value. So, it's a range. It may uh, happen in for a particular combustion chamber. The combustion process will occur at Mach number 0.25 or 0.2 or 0.15 or 0.3. So, that is going to vary depends on the designer. Okay. So, but the range is this 0.2 to 0.3. So, I have to reduce this Mach number, high Mach number flow to this uh, low Mach number flow. For that, we use this diffuser. So, as you can see here, there is an increase in area. Okay, because of this increase in area, your incoming flow is subsonic. The subsonic flow entering a divergent passage will be decelerated. Okay, so the fun function of your diffuser is to decrease your flow velocity, which is required by your combustion chamber. Okay, because uh, within that Mach number range only, you can have the stable combustion. So, if you are going to increase the Mach number, what is going to happen is that there won't be flame stability because of high velocity, your flames will be washed off, meaning is that the combustion will shut off. Okay. So, in order to uh, have a stable combustion, we will do the combustion process in this range of Mach number 0.2 to 0.3. So, for that, we use this diffuser. Okay. So, when we design a diffuser compared to like any other component, we already stated the a combustion chamber should have a least amount of total pressure loss. Similarly, here, since it is a deceleration process, which is moving over some solid surface, okay. So, whenever you see there is going to be a deceleration process, there your pressure is going to increase, that is, adverse pressure gradient. So, this adverse pressure gradient will easily lead to flow separation problem. If there is going to be a flow separation, means obviously you will have the loss in the total pressure. So, you have to design your diffuser such a way that it should decelerate your flow with the least amount of total pressure loss. Okay. And similarly, the diffuser length also should be small so that you can have the entire combustion chamber length can be reduced. Okay. Next one is the liner. This is the second layer of your combustion chamber. Okay. This portion of this. It's a liner. Other name for liner we call it as the uh, flame tube. 
why do i call it as a flame tube is that because the high temperature flow will be limited within this flame tube or there only you will have the combustion process okay so you see we will have the holes the holes are basically to for the flow secondary flow enter inside the combustion chamber okay so that is when the flow comes out of your diffuser we will split the flow into two portion primary flow and secondary flow primary flow will enter inside this uh, liner through this zone okay and the secondary flow will be bypassed between your uh, liner and casing and even though it is bypassed they are going to enter at different locations of your line through the holes that is basically you will have primary hole intermediate hole and uh, dilution of hole okay so primary hole in sense uh, that flow will enter in the primary zone intermediate hole means your flow will enter into the secondary zone and uh, dilution hole means uh, there the flow will enter inside your combustion chamber to dilute or completely reduce the temperature of your uh, flow required by your <coughs> turbine okay so that the process of combustion and all we will see later for now just uh, the function of this liner is to withstand the high temperature okay so you have to make a material you have to go with the super alloys which can withstand the high temperature because your pressure is stood by the uh, what to say your uh, casing whereas your liner should uh, withstand this high temperature so obviously the material uh, made to use to make this uh, liner should be capable of standing uh, high temperature usually we go with the super alloys which can stand the high temperature and even with the high temperature material we we'll, we have to still provide the cooling so how does that we provide the cooling is that you see a secondary air which is passing through between this passage will act as a coolant so that this liner can withstand the high temperature okay and next one is the dome or sweller okay this dome or sweller will present in all the gas turbines okay so where uh, this portion what we call it as the dome as well as a sweller dome means a basically it's kind of like a, a disc with multiple number of holes and swirler means basically it's a uh, like it's kind of like a circular disc in which you will have the angular veins so when the flow is going through this angular veins what is going to happen it will be rotated okay so but the rotation means that you see the length of your combustion chamber is very very small your flow velocity is in the range of mach number 0.2 to 0.3 say let's say 340 means mach number 0.2 means almost 70 to 80 meter per second the length of your combustion chamber is less than even a meter so 17 in a second the flow is capable of traveling 70 meter per second okay so you have to introduce some mechanism to increase the residential time of your air residential time means the amount of time the air is spending inside your combustion chamber okay so that you can spray the fuel and mix with your air thoroughly so that you can have the proper combustion process right so to increase this residential time of your air or to increase the turbulence level of your flow okay so you say you take a laminar flow and a turbulent flow in a laminar flow you won't have the transverse exchange of momentum whereas in a turbulent flow momentum exchange will happen or the rapid mixing process can happen in an high turbulent flow only so the purpose of this dome and swirler is to create the high turbulence so that you can have a huge amount of transfer exchange of momentum so your fuel and air can properly mix that is the purpose of your swirler and dome okay and the next one is we have this snout so what is this snout in sense basically it is the component which splits the incoming air into primary air and secondary air primary air means which is flowing to the uh, liner inside the liner and the secondary air means which is going between the passage between your casing and liner the function of this snout is to uh, split the incoming air into primary and secondary flow okay so the last one is that we have a igniter okay 
So what is this igniter engine? Basically, just like in your uh, petrol engines, what do we have? In your automobiles, we have the igniter, right? That is spark plug. So what is the purpose of your spark plug? You will have a uh, like high pressure the flow, that is fuel air mixture. Okay, so you have to produce some spark to start the combustion process. Okay, so uh, in the petrol engine, we will have the spark plug will be continuously operating. Whereas in our gas turbine engine, basically it is a self-sustained process. That is once I start the ignition, you don't need to provide the continuous ignition. The process will become kind of self-sustained one. So this igniter function is to start the combustion process. That's all. Once it is started, you don't need to provide the continuous spark. Okay. So, uh, because your high temperature, certain portion of your high temperature gas will be always present inside your combustion chamber, okay, which can act as a uh, spark for the continuous or self in the combustion process. Okay, a last component of your uh, um, combustion chamber is that this fuel injector. Among the all these components, this fuel injector design is very, very important as well as complicated because the fuel injector design is the one which is going to, uh, say, decide the uniformity of your combustion and complete combustion process also. So, what is the basic function of your fuel injector is to introduce the fuel. So, for example, in your aircraft, where your fuel is stored, it is in the wings. So, from there, your fuel will be taken. Through this fuel injector only, your fuel will be introduced inside the combustion chamber. So you could ask what is the problem in just introducing the fuel in sense the fuel should be injected in a fine droplet form of uniform size. Okay, that's very very difficult. It should provide a, a droplets of uniform size. So why do we have to make a fine droplet in sense your fuel is in the liquid form. When I spray it in the fine droplet form it can break up easily and evaporate so that it can mix with your incoming air thoroughly. If you are having a droplet of different uh, size, what is going to happen is that uh, the amount it is going to take, the time it is going to take for uh, conversion from liquid to gaseous form, it is going to vary. So the mixing process is also going to vary. Or if you are having a very big droplet form, the fuel at that location that when bonding happens, Local increase in the temperature will occur, which will create the hot spot in your combustion chamber. So, in order to avoid that, your fuel has to be uh, having a hum uh, homogeneous droplet size of very fine scale so that it can easily mix with your incoming airflow and do the complete combustion process. Okay, that is the function of your fuel injector. Okay, so these are all the basic components of your fuel injector sorry gas turbine combustion chamber first one is the casing to stand the high, high pressure next one is the liner it is to stand the high temperature next we have the uh, diffuser to decelerate the incoming flow uh, from your compressor to the required value needed by your combustion chamber and then we have the dome or swirler the combined effect of your dome and swirler is to, uh, what to say, uh, increase the turbulence level of your flow. Okay, so when we design this dome and swirler, it should pro produce the turbulence level, which is sufficient enough to properly mix it, mix your fuel and air. So if you are going to increase the huge amount of turbulence level, what is going to happen is that it is going to increase the total pressure loss, which we don't want. So you have to design your swirler and dome properly so that it can produce the exactly sufficient amount of turbulence to properly mix the mix your fuel and the air. And the snout is to, to split your incoming air into primary flow and the secondary flow. Okay. And uh, uh, next one is your igniter, which is to start the combustion process. And then we have the fuel injector, which is to introduce the fuel from the source to the combustion chamber in the fine droplet form of uniform size. Okay, so what we have discussed uh, till now, we have seen about the uh, basic like combustion chamber of a gas turbine engine and then a basic uh, requirement of a designed combustion chamber and then components of a combustion chamber.
so with this i'll end this today's lecture. like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates